Okay, welcome back to lecture 13 on bio microelectromechanical systems. I will just like to begin with a quick review of the last lecture class we tried to derive uh, the zeta potential uh, associated with a surface um, in contact with the liquid phase. Okay. Uh, we also try to uh, kind of interpret uh, how the dual layer comes into existence, why is it that the charges and the solutions get distributed and forms uh, what you know as the bulk charge or the diffuse layer uh, of a solution and uh, then we try to also calculate the potential as a function of distance as you move away from this double layer into the bulk layer. Uh, we try to use uh, this concept of double layer charging in order to uh, realize a certain type of microfluidic flow called electrosmotic flow. Again just to review that if there is a surface uh, which has a certain set of dangling bonds like let us say silanol bonds on a silicon surface SiOH and it comes in contact with a solution of a certain pH, there is a tendency of that surface to acquire uh, a charge that could be uh, net negative charge or positive charge depending on if the pH is acidic or basic. Because of this charge, if you are able to place a solution close to this charged surface, there is always going to be this diffuse layer which is formulated. If we talk about microcapillaries with in uh, carved in such kind of surfaces with charges and uh, try to flow fluids across it, there is going to be uh, some kind of comparative between the dimension of the channel and uh, the thickness of the diffuse layer. Now, this results to also, uh, this, this also tends to drag, the, the diffuse layer also tends to drag the fluid in such a microcapillary when you put um, an external EMF across it. So, we try to derive some equations and formulations related to this flow process, the electrosmotic flow process and uh, basically uh, we tried, we also tried to look into um, you know the, the Covet's flow uh, just for a comparison of uh, this uh, electrosmotic flow uh, with a, a, a flow wherein there is a let us say a, uh, two plates with one fixed and another moving and trying to drag a fluid layer along with it uh, and then compare it also to a parabolic flow. Uh, where there is a pressure gradient and two fixed plates between which uh, the fluid flows. Okay. So, uh, we kind of saw that uh, in case of electrokinetic flows, there is always uh, a tendency of, uh, of, uh, of the flow to develop a plug like behavior. So, the velocity profile is like a plug. Okay. So, uh, in, in case of pressure driven flows, it is something like a parabola. So, if we consider uh, uh, and try to start from that aspect, uh, we found out that by solving Navier-Stokes equations, okay, so uh, basically uh, we kind of try to uh, make a comparison between the different profiles, the velocity profiles within such channels uh, when the flows are pressure driven as opposed to maybe when the flows are electrokinetic in nature. And uh, we also tried to ascertain what happens in case of a pressure gradient uh, across such a capillary with two sides fixed or two plates fixed and try to derive an equation of velocity and the variation of velocity with respect to the y direction. Okay. So, uh, essentially the function that we obtained uh, for u on the velocity in that case was also minus 1 by 2 eta dp by dx h square times of 1 minus y square by r square h square, where dp by dx essentially is uh, the pressure gradient across the capillary in the x direction. And uh, we assume that uh, you know, the plates, the two plates are respectively fixed at y equal to plus h and y equal to minus h. The middle of such a plate assembly is really the y equal to 0. So, if you plot the u with respect to you know the y essentially uh, you get a parabolic profile the square on the y right. So, there is a flow velocity variation of this parabolic type and uh, this makes sense also because the velocity here very close to this. Uh, uh, channel wall is 0 on either sides and it is maximum 
somewhere at the center of the channel. Okay. So, if y equal to 0, the u becomes u maximum which is 1 minus 2 neta dp by dx times of h square. This is the maximum velocity that one can have in such a channel flow. So, if you assume a little bit of different uh, sign convention in, with the, in which the plates are laid in the way the plates are laid and assuming that 2 h essentially is equal to a or that the distance between these two plates 2 h is nothing but a. So, in that case uh, h becomes equal to a by 2 and u max and this expression is 1 min minus 1 by 2 neta. Okay. del p by del x a square by 4 also 1 minus 8 neta del p by del x a square. Okay. That is what the u max or the u maximum would be in a case like this. Let us now try to find out uh, the maximum flow rate uh, which would happen because of this function u. Okay. So, if you really look at the flow rate, we can assume that in this particular case, there is a circle or there is, there is an annular of area A through which uh, the fluid is emanating out all right, at a velocity u which is given by the function shown earlier in terms of the pressure gradient, uh, the square of the y and, and the square of the distance from the uh, mean plane or y equal to 0. Uh, sorry y equal to plus h and minus h. Okay. So, if we look at the differential, let us suppose this, this uh, value here is y, okay. this distance here is dy and we want to find out what the area vector is. So, the area here would essentially be pi y plus dy square minus pi y square. So, it will be also equal to twice pi y dy. Okay. That is what the dA of this particular annular of fluid would be. Okay. And we already know that u essentially as a function of y has been represented earlier as minus 1 by 2 eta dp by dx r square times of 1 minus y square by r square. r is the radius in this case by the by okay, which is also equal to h. And so, if you want to find out what is uh, the volume flow rate or phi, uh, this uh, becomes equal to 0 to r minus 1 by 2 eta del p by del x r square times of 1 minus y square by r square. Okay. Uh, the, this is the u value times of 2 y dy. As you also know uh, dv by dt the volume flow rate is nothing but uh, the velocity times of area. All right. That is exactly what this is about and the integral we assume takes place between 0 and r which is uh, uh, the radius of the capillary. Okay. So, uh, essentially if you just uh, solve this equation you, you were left with. So, you can take this twice neta del p by del x and r square and twice pi um, outside the integral 0 to r 1 minus or r square minus y square times of y times of dy and there is a divided by r square here. These two cancel out and you are left with minus 1 by 2 eta dp by dx 2 pi and this happens to be r square y square by 2 minus y 4 by 4. Okay. That is what the integral is and between 0 and r. So, essentially this takes the form r square by 4 and we are left with uh, an equation of the type phi equals 
minus 1 by 2 n del p by del x okay, 2 pi times of r 4 by 4. Now, one thing which is of importance here uh, to be seen is that you know essentially we considered a channel at the very beginning. If you consider the, the electrosmotic flow of length L okay, so essentially you considered the channel of length L and if you assume that uh, there is a pressure driven flow in this particular example uh, which is essentially between the length L uh, and the pressure gradient in this case is P then dP by dx can be represented as P by L. Okay. So, if I put back the P by L into this particular equation here for the pressure driven flow case phi becomes equal to 1 by 2 minus 1 by 2 n. Give me a minute minus 1 by 2 eta dp by dr times of twice pi. This uh, is dp by dx times of r 4 by 4. Okay. And uh, essentially dp by dx is nothing but p by l here. So, we get phi is 1 by 2 eta p by l twice pi r 4 by 4 and if we just uh, readjust this equation pi comes out to be equal to pi p r 4 divided by 8 times of eta l. Okay, that is what the volume flow rate is in this particular example. And um, one more issue here uh, is that if you consider what happened in the electrosmotic flow case the zeta potential for the electrosmotic flow the E O F. Okay. Uh, this uh, was derived as 4 pi eta phi times of k divided by d i where k is the conductivity of the medium, phi is the flow rate, eta is uh, the viscosity, i is the current, d is the dielectric constant. And uh, if we just substitute this value of phi here assuming that we equate the electrosmotic flow uh, with uh, the pressure driven flow, we have a situation where when we have this 4 pi eta d i times of pi p r 4 divided by 8 eta l times of k all right and all this uh, essentially can be further uh, reconverted a little bit if you uh, remember from before the value of k is also equated or assumed to be the ratio between the current i the area of cross section q and the electric field x okay so, that is how we found this relationship earlier from the famous r equal to rho l by a term and then using v equal to i r Ohm's law. Okay. So, essentially if we substitute the value of k here uh, in this particular expression, uh, let us uh, find out what it would finally look like. One thing which is uh, very important and very critical to mention here is that since zeta here is equal to this particular term 4 pi eta d i times of pi uh, p r r 4 divided by 8 eta l times of. So, here uh, we can find out tentative relationship between zeta and the pressure. Okay. So, you have uh, a case where you have pi square times pressure p r to the power of 4 divided by d i l and then of course, there is a k term here okay, which automatically means that the zeta potential in this particular case would relate to uh, the pressure of the medium p by the relationship p is equal to zeta times of d i l divided by pi square r 4 k 
what does it really mean is that if you consider a pressure driven flow analog of the electrosmotic flow okay the pressure driven flow analog of the electrosmotic flow uh, what i am trying to indicate is that if you have let's say an electrosmotic force which is flowing the fluid in the capillary and uh, you consider that to be you know you consider that to be essentially within the same flow rate everything contributed by an equivalent flow with a pressure gradient uh, we can make an analogy between what kind of zeta potential is needed uh, for creating what kind of flow pressures okay and uh, here as you see if the zeta potential of any surface is more as in this equation the pressure of the flow would be more and vice versa okay so that's uh, a very interesting observation which will kind of carry forward later here if we substitute the value of k into this particular equation here okay let us look at how this would really behave so in this uh, particular case when i need to actually substitute the value of k here we get p equals zeta d i l divided by pi square r4 and k is essentially i uh, by q x right and q is pi r square so i times of pi r square in the denominator numerator times of x so we can actually uh, do these cancellations here r4 cancels into r2 and pi and pi cancel out so we are left with essentially the terms zeta d l x divided by and of course there uh, there is going to be uh, a 2 here uh, which we forgot because essentially there is a 2 here in the denominator so there is a 2 d i l in the denominator here so twice zeta d l x divided by pi r square is what this effectively would look like all right so essentially one one important thing here is that the pressure that is generated uh, from a flow channel with a zeta potential uh, let's say z is also inversely proportional to the area of cross section of the particular channel all right so so the pressure head p imparted by the electrosmotic flow can be equated using this kind of a formulation which i would just uh, like to right so therefore in summary we would like to write down that the zeta potential uh, is equated to 4 pi eta phi k by di is also equated to the pressure as p is twice zeta l di divided by pi square r 4 k is also equated again as twice zeta l di I'm sorry l d x twice zeta l d x divided by pi r square the area of cross section this is essentially the equivalent pressure okay of an eof channel so you can consider the amount of pressure head that is imparted onto the fluid by virtue of the eof or the electrosmotic flow is essentially this p okay uh, so i can say that the pressure head which is imparted by the eof is given by equation 2 all right so uh, there uh, there can be design problems wherein you want to find out what kind of pressure you know uh, any uf flow gives and so essentially you need the parameters like the zeta potential of the channel the length of the micro channel the dielectric constant of the medium the field which is across this channel and then finally the radius of the capillary micro capillary into question so let us uh, shift our uh, attention to the second electrokinetic phenomena that is uh, the streaming potential okay as we uh, talked about before uh, the velocity of a liquid flowing through a capillary has a as a parabolic profile right with a y which varies as the distance from with, with a v that varies as the distance from the center of the tube to the sides okay this essentially is v this is v all right the velocity so if you just remember back the various uh, ways and means of uh, predicting 
you know the various electrokinetic uh, properties uh, there can be a case where you produce or, or give uh, a pressure driven flow and it creates uh, a set of charges um, on the walls or set of uh, or, or set of currents and uh, there is a case when you apply an an emf from outside and it generates a flow okay so in one case uh, the cause is the emf in another case the cause is the flow so flow generates emf in inside the channel a flow generating emf inside the channel uh, the phenomena is also known as streaming potential okay so uh, the liquid at the surface of uh, such a flow being stationary leads to the double layer at uh, the interface consisting of a, of a stationary phase and a mobile phase the solution and the relative motion or movement of these two planes of the double layer one stationary with respect to the wall and another moving with the fluid would give rise to the movement of uh, the charge and generator potential. So, let us derive uh, what this potential level would be in such a micro channel case. So, let us say we have a parabolic flow uh, taking place within this particular architecture here and the velocity flow profile is also indicated by this particular parabola okay, where the maximum velocities at the center and then these velocities at the at both sides of the channel are essentially in the no slip zone so there's zero so u here the velocity is uh, kind of uh, also defined as p times of r square minus y square by 2 eta l right p is the pressure r square minus uh, y so this is uh, again what we found out from the parabolic flows right p by eta l r square minus y square so if we put uh, this uh, liquid through a pressure difference or push this liquid through a pressure difference across this channel there is going to be a double layer which is generated and in that case we can model the flow pretty much like this figure right here okay so if you see here there is a double layer of charges which are created on both sides one is a stationary layer which is the positive layer in this case so this is essentially the stationary layer of charges and the other is a mobile phase which is the negative uh, you know charges on the solution. So, when whenever there is a fluid flow by means of a pressure these charges this this positive layer being stationary and the and the negative layer being mobile they move relatively with respect to each other ok. So, let us assume that this uh, delta b this uh, thickness of the double layer right and let us also assume that r be the radius of uh, this particular channel. So, essentially r is the distance from the center of the channel all the way up to the wall of the channel and we decipher, we decipher a parameter x here where x is equal to essentially r minus delta ok. And in this particular case the u the velocity uh, which is actually represented as p divided by 2 eta l times of r square minus y square can be represented in this case if I substitute the y by the equivalent r minus delta ok. So, this is actually let us let us say this is y in the notational just for notational consistency this direction is the y direction and this is the x direction. So, this is actually y and this essentially is also y equals r minus delta for notational consistency. So, r square minus uh, y square can be represented as p by 2 eta l times of r square minus r minus delta square and uh, if we do this uh, or if we try to calculate this we are left with 2 r delta minus delta square ok and delta being very very small uh, we have already mentioned that essentially delta the charge the uh, you know the dual layer thickness is around tens of nanometers and so therefore this uh, this delta square is very 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 small in comparison to twice r delta can be safely neglected and the u essentially in this particular case would be nothing but p times of twice r delta by 2 neta l or p r delta by neta l okay that is what uh, the u is going to be the u delta 
is going to be in this particular case okay the velocity across uh, this double layer. Now as uh, we, we need to consider that at the movement of the front of the liquid forces over these layer of charges on uh, which on, on the surface essentially it produces a current okay and uh, uh, this current uh, is also given by the product of the total charge around a unit length okay of the tube and the velocity. So, if you have let us say a certain surface charge distribution in terms of charge uh, per unit uh, area sigma okay and uh, in a unit length that means you have uh, the charge density in terms of per unit surface area, but essentially the total amount of charge we are considering only on a unit length. So, that particular charge uh, times of uh, velocity that means how many such unit lengths uh, the relative movement of charge is happening over the surface would comprise of the current. So, let me just uh, explain this in a little more detail. So, let me explain this in a little bit uh, details here that suppose you have uh, a capillary of length L and radius R right. This is the radius R and length is L and we have a surface density of charge inside this capillary as sigma surface charge density. Now, the total charge contained in this capillary is given by sigma times of 2 pi r times of L right 2 pi r L being the surface area the internal surface area of uh, the particular capillary. So, if I consider a per unit length of this total charge okay. So, the total charge per unit length that comes out to be sigma 2 pi r right and this uh, essentially uh, if multiplied by the velocity would mean uh, that if suppose velocity is x meters per second. So, this uh, per unit length moves so many times in a second. Uh, so, uh, essentially it is charge per second okay. and that is what uh, current uh, is defined as. So, therefore, uh, let me just write this down in totality that as the movement of the water front forces over the dual layer ok. A current is uh, produced and this is also given by the product of the total charge around a unit length of the tube and the velocity of the uh, moving part of the layer. So, the total current I in this case would be sigma times of 2 pi r charge per unit length times of length per unit time u delta. Substituting the value of u delta from the derivation made earlier we are left with uh, u delta is p r delta divided by eta l as you found out from the case of the pressure driven flow and therefore, this current i in this case is nothing but twice sigma pi r square p delta divided by eta l ok. So, let us assume that if the liquid in question has a conductivity k liquid has conductivity k and we already know the relationship r equal to rho l by a right and essentially k which is 1 by rho is nothing but r l divided by r a ok. So, a in this case of course, is uh, nothing but the radius square times of pi the cross sectional area of the circular capillary and essentially the k the resistance r of the channel is uh, L divided by k times of pi r square right. In other words the conductance which is the reciprocal of resistance of uh, the liquid 
in the microcapillary is just the inverse of that that is pi r square k by L. Okay. So, the streaming potential E s developed because of this current and current is formulated by the motion of uh, the charge across the dual layer is given by I times R I times L by pi R square k right. And if we further try to put the value of current here from the previous derivation what we which we obtained as 2 sigma pi r square p delta by nita this term here was the i. So, here uh, the final expression would come out to be 2 pi r square sigma delta p by nita l times of l by pi r square k. Uh, these go off and the l's go off and we are left with a term twice sigma delta p by eta k. Okay? So, that is what the streaming potential uh, would really be. So, one uh, important point here to be mentioned is that you can easily find out from this potential the length delta the thickness of the dual layer uh, which can be of immense utility in almost all electrochemistry. So, that uh, essentially is what the streaming potential is in case of a flow just flown through a pressure gradient over a surface over a dual layer of the surface. So, um, when uh, we are talking, so we have already derived uh, the streaming potential here E s in terms of 2 sigma delta p by n k. Let us modify a little bit in terms of the zeta potential try to involve uh, what the zeta potential of a such a channel would be a surface would be. So, as we know from earlier equations that the zeta potential uh, of uh, such a system of micro channel in contact with a liquid phase is also given by 4 pi sigma delta by d. Sigma is the surface charge density delta is the, the double layer charge uh, double layer thickness d is the dielectric constant of uh, the medium of interest. So, if you just do a little bit of uh, mathematical manipulation here sigma s sigma delta comes out to be equal to d times of zeta by 4 pi and essentially if you have uh, had a look earlier at the at the e s the streaming potential uh, it came out to be twice uh, zeta d p the pressure divided by 4 pi eta k. Okay. So, uh, if we just uh, try to substitute the value of this uh, delta into sigma into uh, this uh, particular equation here we are left with that let us say d zeta is also uh, equal to 4 pi delta sigma okay? and essentially from the E s value if you uh, substitute this 4 pi sigma delta p divided by 4 pi eta k okay? you are left with twice sigma delta p by eta k. So, essentially that is what E s or streaming potential would result in and uh, we can also write this down as E s the streaming potential per unit pressure which is uh, given as a difference between the both ends of capillary uh, which is causing this fluid to move is also twice sigma delta divided by n k. Okay? and essentially that is what is the final form of uh, the ratio between the streaming potential and the pressure. All right. So, uh, another interesting thing here to find out is uh, that if you really want to write these whole terms in terms of uh, quantities which are measurable. So, uh, let us actually uh, try to understand this more in terms of measurable quantities like uh, flow rate phi then you know uh, things like measurable quantities like current uh, across the microcapillaries so on so forth. So, there would be a little modification uh, though which we will be needing here. Uh, let us resubstitute back this value of sigma delta back into this equation you are left with uh, essentially twice d zeta divided by 4 pi nita k right and we can easily find out a correlation between uh, 
the potential phi uh, sorry the flow rate phi and the current i uh, by looking at the equation that we had derived earlier uh, which talked about the relationship between the zeta potential and these other parameters 4 pi eta phi k divided by d i ok. So, if you try to you know kind of uh, readjust these parameters here uh, you are left with uh, the value of phi the flow rate as d zeta i divided by 4 pi eta k right and this can also be represented as phi by i is d zeta by 4 pi n k. Uh, this quantity kind of looks similar to what this is. So, essentially s by p here is nothing but you know twice this quantity here phi by i. So, if you can measure the flow rate in such a streaming uh, flow and also measure the amount of current that is produced this can easily give you this ratio E s E s by p and E s is the streaming potential and p is the pressure. So, if uh, let us say the pressure gradient that were driving uh, or the pressure difference that were driving the flow is uh, p and phi was the flow rate which was created and it generated a current i you could easily calculate back calculate what is the streaming potential in that particular application right. So, that is what is used sometimes as a sensing mechanism uh, for investigating the combinations of surfaces and their behavior with respect to flowing solutions ok. So, let us uh, try to summarize that in pressure driven flows uh, essentially the flow profile is parabolic in nature right and there is a no slip boundary condition at all the walls or the edges of such a channel. The flow profile pretty much looks something like this right here right. You have like a parabola with a velocity which is maximum at the center and which is actually 0 at all these different walls. So, electrokinetic flows on the other hand electrophoresis, electrosmosis and dielectrophoresis and these are some of the mechanisms for doing electrokinetic uh, flows. Uh, this right here is a simulation by Jaeger's group up at uh, the University of Washington and uh, essentially if you just compare you know the, the flow profiles which are generated from the EMF and a parabolic flow. If you may recall in a pressure driven flow the flow profile is something like a parabola of this sort right. So, uh, the velocity kind of the velocity vectors kind of keep on maximizing as they go from walls towards the center of this particular capillary. On the other hand for the EOM, EOF flow or the electrosmotic flow as we know the flow really takes place as a plug flow from the start of one double layer which is essentially this side here all the way up to the other double layer which is on the other side of the channel. So, this area is having a constant velocity right. So, let me just uh, use a different color here to represent uh, the flow rate related to or the flow velocity is related to the uh, you know this uh, the electrosmotic flows. So, if you see here as represented by these yellow color arrows these are the flow vectors between the double layers essentially in an electro osmotic flow. So, it is like a plug flow all the velocities between these two double layers starting from here all the way up to here are uniquely similar to each other as opposed to the parabolic where there is a slow increase of velocity as it goes uh, from sides all the way to the center. Now, the interesting point here is the behavior of the flow rate around the, the surface in question till the double layer starts. So, this is essentially the Helmholtz plane ok. We have been talking about this a lot of and on uh, the Helmholtz plane. So, this particular layer here as you see is though having a kind of parabolic profile which means that this is the layer which is shears to give way to this plug like flow ok. So, the velocity really close to this uh, surface here is 0 and the velocity here is some value maximum value v and the flow profile between the two are really parabolic on both sides. So, that is how you interpret both these electrosmotic flows and the parabolic flows. Now, there is there are several important issues uh, which uh, emanate from this that uh, the electrokinetic flows being a plug like flow uh, there is always almost uh, you know a, a continuity of or, or a uniformity of velocity vectors across such a channel 
right. For characterization sake particularly when you do particle image velocimetry uh, it may be of immense utility if uh, even the flow uh, in, in cross section of such a channel is uh, having all uniform velocity ok. Uh, this also would mean uh, that uh, um, these kind of flows do not lead to any particulate separation uh, particularly when the particles uh, concerned are all different sizes. So, if there are parabolic flows as uh, we have seen in cases of uh, channels uh, which are pressure driven essentially. Uh, one aspect that comes into picture is uh, that if suppose there are different say cells of all different sizes moving across such channels uh, with the, the continuity and with, with this velocity variation in the parabolic profile uh, the heavier masses tend to move towards the side and the lighter masses tend to kind of move more towards the center by the principle of conservation of momentum. Ultimately the retentate here at the center is all consisting smaller entities and the retentate at the sides here uh, all containing the bigger entities. This is known as uh, leukocyte, this is also known as uh, margination ok. In the human body uh, the microcapillaries essentially do this job where leukocytes which are heavier in comparison to the RBCs would migrate slowly to the walls of the capillary and uh, would uh, be rich on towards the vasculature's walls essentially ok. So, that is an ad, uh, that is sometimes an advantage ok, but then in some cases it may be desirable to move uh, these kind of uh, different sizes and masses throughout the micro channel uniformly without the separation coming into picture. So, electrokinetic flows are the best in uh, those kind of cases because they essentially do not have any you know any velocity variation it is a plug like flow like behavior ok. So, this uh, kind of talks about what happens on a silicon dioxide surface I have been repeating it off and on. So, you can see here that on a silicon dioxide surface first of all the surface gets hydrolyzed and then later on forms a SiO minus and there is a net negative charge on the surface due to which there is a positive charge of counter ions which is uh, developed in the bulk uh, as bulk charges or diffuse layer charges. And then when you apply a potential across it all these bulk charges try moving towards the negative electrode thus dragging the fluid around it. And so therefore, electrosmotic flow in silicon micro channels is uh, a great uh, area of study ok. So, some important observations here as summary the flow rates of uh, such flows proportional to the dielectric constant psilon, the electric field external to the uh, channel the zeta potential of a surface and uh, also proportional to the area and inversely proportional to the viscosity of uh, the particular medium which is flowing through these surfaces. Uh, so, essentially depends on the charges at the interface and uh, there is a counter ion accumulation uh, and which actually drags along the fluid along with it and it results in a plug like flow ok. Electrophoresis on the other hand is the motion of charged particles directly in a fluid medium and we will be dealing with this a little bit later in more details. But let us look at one illustration here where we can use this electrokinetic techniques for designing micro pumps ok. So, in this particular problem here we want to design somehow a electrokinetic pumping network ok. So, using this principle of uh, double layer and formulation of charge etcetera on the uh, surface and the bulk of the fluid uh, we would like to design a pump network here. So, the dimensions that are given is basically that uh, the circular uh, the, the micro channels are circular in nature uh, they are etched in glass of course. So, there will be a SiO minus layer and they have a diameter of about 100 micrometers. So, this here and this right here are the two channels right and uh, the channel lengths are actually depicted in the figure. So, the length here is 10 mm between let us say 3 and there is a point of intersection let us say 0 ok. So, between 3 and 0 the length of the channel is 10 mm between 4 and 0 it is uh, 100 mm uh, between 1 and 0 and 2 and 0 both are same 20 mm each ok. So, that is uh, how uh, this pumping network is being laid out. Uh, these essentially are the reservoirs 1, 2, 3 and 4 and we have the following measurements. So, if we measure the electrical impedance across ports 1 and 2 that means this port right here and this port right here it results in 400 mega ohms of resistance 
and the potentials at ports 1, 2, 3, 4 are respectively 1000 volts, 1000 volts, 1500 volts and 0 volts respectively. So, let me just write that down here. So, the potential at port 1 is about 1000 volts of applied potential, uh, same goes true for port 2, another 1000 volts and then uh, port 3 it is about 1500 volts and port 4 is about uh, 0 volts. So, there is essentially no potential applied on port 4. So, the zeta potential here is assumed to be about minus 100 millivolts as can be defined by the surface in connection to another liquid phase and uh, you have to determine the direction of the uh, and the flow rate of the electrokinetic flow formulated in this case in the longest channel that is the one which uh, measures about 100 millimeters or this channel between 0 and port 4. Okay. So, the viscosity and relative dielectric constant of the fluids are given to be 0 0.001 kg meter second and 50 uh, respectively and the dielectric constant of vacuum is uh, found to be 8.85 10 to the power of minus 40 farad per centimeter.